Let me show you how to connect Outboard effects to Ableton Live. Right, so here's a track I'm working on right now. And let's say I want to add a delay effect to the drums to add some more tension. By default in Ableton Live, you've got uh, a reverb and a delay on send A and B. And I can just use this, of course, and I can automate all the parameters. But it might be more fun to use my actual hands and to grab a delay pedal. So, let me grab some cables. Right, so I've got a cheap JoJo analog uh, delay pedal right here. And I've hooked it up to my interface. And yeah, in this case, you do need an interface with a spare output and a spare input. Because I need one output uh, to send a signal to my guitar pedal. And I need to return that signal to my interface. Of course, I'm using a mono pedal right now. But in case you've got a, a stereo effect unit, uh, like a reverb uh, unit, then you of course need two separate outputs and inputs. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to Ableton. Uh, if I go to the menu, options, preferences, uh, to the audio tab, here I can configure the inputs. Uh, so in my case, I've got uh, 32, but you can activate them. They're yellow if they're uh, activated. And you can activate both mono and stereo inputs. You can even name them if you want. So uh, vocal, uh, synth, whatever. And you can do the same for the output. So make sure those are activated. Okay, so now if we head over to the return track, I can get rid of this delay. And now I can set the output uh, right here. So audio two, uh, external out. I'm using a mono output uh, and I've got it connected to output uh, number five. Okay, so now it's going out of my interface to the pedal. But yeah, of course, I also need to send it back. So I'm gonna make an audio track. Let's call this uh, delay uh, return. And here I also need to select the right input. And number five as well. Now when I set monitoring to input, I should be able to hear something. Okay, I need to turn on the pedal. Now I should be able to send some stuff over there. So if I take the drum group, for example, send that over there. Yeah, the only disadvantage of this pedal is that it doesn't have a full wet signal. Uh, so we do get a delay uh, right now. And that's because of the buffer size. So. A way to get around this is to use the external audio effect uh, plugin. So if you go to audio effects, uh, external audio effect, and we put that over here. And now I just need to change audio two back to a main. And in this case, if I just mute the audio track, now we can set the output right here. Output number five and the input as well. So now it works similar to our plugin. And if I want, I can adjust uh, the output gain. So the signal going out of my interface or the input gain. And I can even flip the face. So that's useful. Uh, and I've got a dry wet knob. But as you can hear, if I disable or bypass the pedal, Now the latency is basically gone. So when I activate it, 
Yeah, this pedal flips the polarity. I'm not sure why, but that's where this one comes in handy. Okay. And yeah, another benefit of this external uh, audio effect is that you can also use it as an insert. So I can copy this and let's say I want to use it on a synth. Maybe this one. I'm just gonna mute uh, the return track for now. Oh wait, I also need to disable the external audio effect. Otherwise it will still send audio to the pedal. That's not what I want. So now we only get the effect on this uh, synth channel. Okay, let me get rid of this one. Uh, let me turn up the feedback. And now I can also mix in uh, the dry signal over here. So I can really use it as a plugin. That's pretty cool. And you can even save a preset. So if you've got several hardware devices connected. So I can call this uh, a Jojo delay. And now you can easily recall this. You can save it as your uh, favorite. And now I can find it right here. And yeah, that's really where the power comes in. If you've got an interface with multiple inputs and outputs. So I can uh, have a delay on input 5. Uh, maybe a reverb on input and output 6. Uh, a compressor on 7 and 8. Yeah, whatever you want. The only issue, of course, is that I've only got one pedal, so I can't really duplicate it. And that's where return tracks are really useful for, because now I can send multiple drum sounds uh, to this effect. So let's say I want to create a build-up, and I want to slowly increase the send level on maybe the entire drum group. Uh, so, for example, right here, I've got a mini break. Yeah, let's try that. And now, of course, I do need to record uh, everything. Uh, so I've got a delay return channel. In this case, I don't want to hear it. So I can disable the monitor. But I do need to arm it. And as an audio input, I'm going to take... Uh, the return track. So now I should get a signal. If I open up the send. And now I can record this. Just a feedback amount on the pedal. Or even the delay time. And if it sounds like crap, I'll just uh, record it again. But now you can see uh, I've got a recording. I only uh, need to mute the return track for a second. Otherwise I will hear it twice. So here's the recording. Okay, now let's say I want to uh, do an additional recording. I've also recorded the send amount. Yeah, let me dial in the delay again first. I'll just mute the track. Okay, like that. Turn back the feedback and record again.
now I can right click uh, the return track, so the delay audio track, and go to, where is it? Oh, I need to disable automation for a second. And then I can show take lanes. And now you can see all the recordings I've made. And yeah, now I can just select uh, the best parts. So for example, I like the feedback uh, part over here. I just select it and press enter. And yeah, now of course I also need to mute the return track again. Or maybe the other way around. So like this. Well, you get the point. Not the best example, but there's actually one cool thing we can do. Uh, if I grab a reverb pedal for a second. Okay, so I've got a reverb uh, pedal connected. I'm just gonna turn up the mix all the way. Uh, make it a bit longer. Uh, yeah, let me just delete the automation. Okay, so if I open up this one. I get a reverb. Okay, so another benefit of a return track is that you can create feedback loops. So I've got a reverb pedal right now and it doesn't have a feedback option, but I can add that if I go to the return track. I've got a couple sends right here, but as you can see, if I turn them up, uh, they're grayed out. And that's because I need to activate them. If I right click on the send, I can go to enable send. And now I can send the output of uh, return track B back to itself. Maybe you need to play around with the gain a bit. Or the face. So you can create some really weird atmospheres this way. Let's uh, just record that. I'll duplicate the track, call this reverb uh, atmosphere or reverb feedback. Delete this. And yeah, let's arm the track. I'll just turn down the scent for a second. Maybe I'll use this one. Okay, so I need to press record, of course. Now I've got a reverb, and let's enable send beep. So uh, mute the return, and now you can see the recording. And yeah, I can do whatever I want uh, uh, with this, of course. But uh, yeah, the main point of this video was to show you how to use external audio effects. And this is how you do it. All right, that's it. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions and if you want to learn more about hardware, check out the Electronic Music Studios Facebook group. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you all next week with another tutorial.